Yeah. So when you go to South Africa, mm -hmm. when you buy an animal, they're usually graded in terms of types. Yes. Type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and type 5. Mm -hmm. The highest you can buy uh -huh. is a is a type 5. Yes. So that that ram mm -hmm. ni that's a type 5 South African ram. Yes. Uh then we have uh so pure South African ewes mm -hmm. uh, that we sourced from a farmer in South Africa, one of the top breeders actually, yes. a guy called Mickey Phillips. Mm -hmm. Then the percentage, the Kenyan doper, mm -hmm. we sourced from our farms in uh, both uh, Kajiado County yes. and also Kiambu, uh, Northlands, uh, yes. Mr. Uhuru's farm, Gesheha farms in yeah. Riru. Yes. Yeah, so this is one of our breeding groups. Yes. Uh, so we try, when you, we give one ram, the maximum number of ewes we give is 40. Okay. Depends on the age of the animal. Yes. So, but now this one, we have given this guy 38. He's a good performer. Mm -hmm. We let him stay with the ewes for at least two months. Okay. But at, an, at a minimum, yes. you need to let this guy be here for five weeks. Five weeks, yes. Because the cycle they are ewes mm -hmm. is every 17 days. Mm -hmm. In our farm, mm -hmm. we don't breed every ewe. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we don't do. One of the things we make sure we do is like we look at the body condition. Yes. You're that you before you give it to a ram. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you want to look for is to make sure that animal is healthy. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of um, fat mm -hmm. and a lot of muscle on her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to feel the this side of the animal, the rib cage. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It needs to be flat. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so that tells you this animal mm -hmm. has a lot of uh, fat and muscle mm -hmm. and also the spinal cord mm -hmm. that you if you look at the back it's flat also okay that the reach the spinal cord is not you can't feel it when you're touching it okay that's very very crucial because that makes tells you this animal will be able to carry that fetus mm -hmm. it has a lot to offer to that fetus and okay. you'll, it will give birth to a healthy animal okay yeah at least two months before the ram is introduced to the use mm -hmm. we do what is called flushing yes flushing is giving extra nutrients and nutrition mm -hmm. to the use yes and what you're going after mm -hmm. uh, what flushing does for you it helps in fertilization mm -hmm. and also multiple uh, bad uh, twins yes yeah so you increase the feed we what we do here we actually give them more something like sunflower yes a maize jam mm -hmm. uh, around between 100 and 200 grams per day okay because what we want the animal to do is when like when you put the ram in there mm -hmm. we are guaranteed fertilization yes yeah so then the the animals are exposed the the ram we, actually right now this guy has been with these ladies for almost uh, two months mm -hmm. uh throughout the pregnancy mm -hmm. We kind of we are consistent. Yes. And make sure that, that that animal is getting enough protein. Mm -hmm. uh, since our farm is uh, zero graze, yeah, we only do silage. Yes. So we give them like a, between a kilo and two kilos of silage per day, mm -hmm. and two hundred grams of sunflower mm -hmm. throughout the pregnancy. Yes. However, the last month of pregnancy, these animals are pregnant for five months. Mm -hmm. The last month is is very crucial because that's when between 70 and 80 percent of the fetal growth occurs mm -hmm. so you you hit a, a challenge with these animals because the fetus is pressing the mama's womb, uh, stomach yes. so the mama can't eat a lot of food mm -hmm. so that's when we increase the amount of grain we are giving we go from 200 to almost 400 grams okay. of concentrate that's maize jam and sunflower every oh, okay. day yeah so hey james yeah. it, for me it's actually difficult to imagine that you you started this thing Maybe four years ago? Yeah. Yeah, you, you're quite knowledgeable about the subject. Yeah, so yeah, actually, so, yeah. yeah. So how, how did you get here? Uh, so to get here, we started off, we were located in uh, Dakaine. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, we, that was 2019. Mm -hmm. I bought like uh, four years from a farmer in Kajiado. Mm -hmm. Then we relocated here uh, 2021. Yes. Uh, but going full scale, building all this up, this was 2022. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2023, we said introduced the animals here. Yes, that's just last year. Just last year, yes. yes. So you. <laughs> yeah, we have okay. had uh, five shipments from South Africa. Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing that was really important to me uh, was quality. Yes. Quality is really, really vital. Mm -hmm. So for the last one year, we, we've seen what you have been producing, and I'm kind of glad. I'm, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, so. Uh, the the process of importing yeah yeah for for a, for a beginner you when you started you you've never farmed before i have never farmed before what was that process like actually i was so fortunate 
I get, I get, I came to know Ben Amago, yes, Amago yes. Dopa. Yes. He helped me do the importation. Actually, I imported through his license. Yes. Uh, but then after that, I knew uh, some of the farmers like you know, Albihon mm -hmm. and Mickey Phillips. Mm -hmm. So what you usually do, you can go to when they have in auctions mm -hmm. online. Find a farmer. Mm -hmm. You can decide to go to the auction when they have in an auction. Yes. Uh, or you can deal with the farmer directly. Yes. So I knew there are two farmers and I felt I needed to buy from them. Mm -hmm. uh, one was a guy called Mickey Phillips. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, we got the animals. Uh, ben helped them, me bring them over. Mm -hmm. uh, then you just pick them up at Jomo Kenyatta. Yes. So, but there's a time you need to have them quarantined in South Africa for 21 days. Yes. So when you buy from the farmer, mm -hmm. you have to pay a quarantine facility mm -hmm. for 21 days. Then those animals are brought in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Kenya now, when they arrive in Kenya, mm -hmm. what is the process like? You have to do the, the clearance, mm -hmm. uh, customs, mm -hmm. and also you need to get a, a veterinary. There's a veterinary officer based in Jomo Kenyatta. Yes. Who clears the animals and also gives you the transportation license mm -hmm. to transport them anywhere in Kenya. Ah, okay. Yeah. The crucial information mm -hmm. you need to get from the previous owner is deworming and vaccinations. Ah, okay. That's very, very crucial. Yes. Now, when in terms of feeding, uh, as we only do silage, mm -hmm. they, they, we, they went on them on that the first day they were here. Yes. And we hadn't had a problem. Actually, when these animals came here, considering South Africa is one of the hottest climates in the, on the continent. Yes. And we are in Nyahururu, which is the highest city in the country. Yes. We never had a problem that we needed that necessitated the need for us to give them a, a climate vaccine injection. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we didn't do that. Ah, okay. Yeah. When it comes to zero grazing, one of the things we make sure is that at a minimum, these animals get uh, between one and three kilos of silage. Yes. Daily. Daily, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus the, supp the supplement. The that supplement, is the that, yeah. We use sunflower. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is we get them around 100 to 200 grams okay yeah uh, depending on where they are in terms of pregnancy yes yeah they are kind of like almost like the last month we give them around 300 grams oh, okay. of sunflower every day okay. but it's throughout the year we only do silage mm -hmm. uh, we find it more beneficial to the animals we used to do mainly hay mm -hmm. and then we discovered in terms of land use mm -hmm. you get more for your back when you go silage yes yeah and then also like a silage has more nutrients yes uh, there is it's Pretty much uh, with the products you have in the market, like Molar Plus, mm -hmm. you are guaranteed that, that whatever that animal consumes, yes. majority of it is going to stay with the animal. Yes, yes. It's not going to it, mm -hmm. go through it. Yes. Yes. And, and you, you mentioned something uh, that opened my eyes, eh? mm. is the, uh, the quantity mm -hmm. of litter mm -hmm. you're getting out of there. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I've never seen something, anything like this. Yeah. Yeah, there's literally nothing. Yeah, yeah. They, they, totally though. Like yeah. before, when you used to do hay, as I was telling you, yes. be, between more than for almost like 120 animals, yes. you, when we swept the paddocks, mm -hmm. we were getting around six wheelbarrows yes. of litter mm -hmm. every day. Yes. Now, when we transitioned to silage, yes. uh, out of all those animals, we are getting between one and a half to two wheelbarrows wow. a, a day. Yes. And uh, we are saying we are talking about 150 plus plus animals. Yeah, animals. One, 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 one to two wheelbarrows. Yes. A day. A day. Yes. Because whatever that animal is consuming. You, you're not in a manure business. I, I'm not in the yeah. manure business. So that, <laughs> yeah, because what you want to do is make sure that whatever that animal consumes mm. stays with it. True. You know? Yes. Yeah, and there are so many products like that out there. Like uh, we use Molar Plus, mm -hmm. which has really helped us in our silage making. Yeah. Yes. So we are very certain that whatever these animals are eating, yes. uh, they are benefiting. Mm -hmm. In a month, mm -hmm. for a hundred and... Uh, 50 animals mm -hmm. right now we are seeing as we are doing around seven tons of silage so, seven tons yeah per oh, month per month okay per month yes okay as we were discussing earlier when you came mm -hmm. now if you if you plant super napier yes on one acre mm -hmm. it gives you between 180 and 200 tons yes. of super napier mm -hmm. per year yes we only at seven uh, thousand seven tons per month mm -hmm. we need only need 84 yes so meaning one acre of super napier will feed these animals for two years. Yes. So land, land. I don't think you don't need a lot of land. Yes. Uh, then the other thing also we were talking about in terms of uh, of uh, maize, yes. maize silage. Yeah? Yes. Now, if you go with the products that are out there, DK triple seven, sixty two thirteen, and you plant for silage, you usually plant two seeds per hole. Mm -hmm. So on average, that one acre can give you between ten and thirty tons of maize silage uh, each. Mm -hmm. So five acres covers me for the whole year. 
and leasing five acres where I lease, we pay five thousand. So twenty five thousand for land lease for 20, covers for five me. Years. Yeah. For, wow. Uh, yeah. So I pay five thousand per acre. That's how you're able to achieve uh, these numbers in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a half an acre. In a half an acre. And, yeah. And you see, what's interesting is that uh, by the look of it, eh, mm -hmm. it, looks like you can you can actually double the numbers. Yeah. If actually, look right at, now they, yeah. are, they don't look congested. And yeah, that is interesting because so, 150 mm -hmm. uh, different paddocks, of course. Mm -hmm. So you, if you're looking at just here, yeah, might not look as much. Yeah, but there are different paddocks. Eh? Yeah, there's and something I need. Yeah, need to add before to yes. qualify what you're saying. Yes. Now, if you look at this paddock, mm -hmm. this paddock is 40 feet mm -hmm. by 157. Yes. The covered area mm -hmm. is 20 feet by 157 yes the uncovered area is 20 by 157 mm -hmm. now when i was designing this place i took uh, courses actually spread a lot of information from two universities that mm -hmm. specialize in room, small ruminants mm -hmm. oklahoma state university and michigan state university yes where they suggest that a, to a small ruminant needs 20 square foot of 40 square foot of space mm -hmm. total yes 20 square foot Kula ina kula ina ina lala, uh -huh. and 20 square foot where it's outside. That's yes. where you'll find they, they have a lot of space here. True. There's their outside paddock. Mm -hmm. So each animal here is guaranteed. We have calculated they are getting at least a minimum 40 square foot of space. 20 square foot mm -hmm. of where the covered area where they sleep and eat. Yes. And 20 square foot outside. Mm -hmm. One of the things that going with that ratio one of the things we have we have discovered the instances of diseases is less mm -hmm. these animals are not stressed and yes. a stressed animal will get sick yes so they have enough room mm -hmm. uh, to eat and also sleep okay so i think we should go inside yes, eh? yes, yes. so that you Definitely. look at what we have in terms of um let's shut this before they want to come in yeah yeah particular paddock we are in mm -hmm. is 50 feet long yes and 20 feet wide yes so that gives us a thousand square feet inside here now each animal requires 20 square foot so meaning this paddock alone this particular partition yes at a minimum the maximum i would say is 50 animals mm -hmm. yeah so and so like it makes sure that gives you the guarantee Mm -hmm. that that animal is not congested yes and as you can see we have a place two places of uh, watering yes where they uh, they they drink water yes then we have the the salt leaks mm -hmm. and also we have the minerals uh yeah so in terms of space uh if you're going to do zero grazing my, my recommendation is like make sure you at least give that animal between 30 and 40 square foot of space mm -hmm. uh Yes. So this is where they, they will feed? This is where sleep. they feed. The silage is put here. Mm -hmm. Like now we fed them silage. Mm -hmm. First we put the silage. Mm -hmm. Then we put the sunflower on top. 200 yes. grams per animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, then fresh, fresh water. Mm -hmm. And that's... Uh, you can see the grain. Yeah, yeah, we can see the grain. Yeah. Yeah. In, uh, fermented. Fermented. Then silage, the other thing yes. I wanted to add on to this. Mm -hmm. We're inside the paddock and you don't smell anything. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I was actually headed there. Yeah. Because one, you see, yeah. there's no litter. There's no litter. And, uh, we'd mentioned that, eh? Yeah. And it's important that people notice that eh? yeah. it is a bit dry. Yes. Because you would expect for, for the numbers that are living in here mm -hmm. and they're spending most of the time here because they are feeding, they're also feeding here. Yeah. Uh, I don't even see any urine anywhere. Yeah. yeah? Uh, one of the reasons why uh and I, th I think this is a very contra controversial topic in kenya yes and i'm going to address it on where what i felt mm -hmm. would work for us yes now when you're doing sheep farming mm -hmm. you can des either decide to have it raised yes there's some farmers who prefer that mm -hmm. or you can ha decide to have it uh like kind of what we have over here yes the reason why i gravitated towards this mm -hmm. is because i didn't want my paddocks to smell mm -hmm. and so what I do every month, we pour agricultural lime mm -hmm. in here. The one that farmers use for dealing with acidity in the soil. Yes. That takes away the, the ammonia. Mm -hmm. And also, I, one of the concerns I have with raised, um, 
uh, whatever paddocks or raised goat houses. Mm -hmm. Remember th that urine soaks into the wood. Yes. So y you have to be content with the smell though. Yes. You know, the animals are obviously cleaner than the ones that are sleeping on the ground. Yes. But I felt that's not something I felt I needed to, to do. So these paddocks are swept at most like three, four times a year where mm -hmm. we change the bedding. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we like it to, to be natural as it is because it helps us control the smell. So this is uh, sawdust? This is, we are, it's, wood uh, it's sawdust. Yeah, wood chips mm -hmm. uh, and sawdust. So like uh, the next two or three months, we'll be taking it out okay. when the rains are close by because we want to use it for planting. Yes. But I pretty much, the, the, as I was telling you earlier, before I started doing this, mm -hmm. I was based in the US. Yes. And one of the things I did, I visited a lot of sheep farms in America mm -hmm. to find out how they did it. Yes. And majority of the large scale sheep farms, farms with like three, 4,000 sheep, eh, mm -hmm. they all sleep on the ground. Yes. So they might put like oats, grass as a bedding, yes. but most of them prefer. Yeah, but that is preference. I'm not, I'm not saying go do this because yeah. I think it's the best way. Yes. But what works for us? Yes. We like our animals to fill the ground. Yes. It controls bacteria. It controls ammonia. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that works for us. So, yeah. If you look at that corner, there's a lot, there seem to be a lot of it over there. Yes. You'll notice something. In the morning when you come, like we start our operation at 5 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. most of the animals are going to be sleeping on that side because there's more... Uh, let's say like cushioning yes. for them, especially with these animals that are pregnant, mm -hmm. they will dig a small thing for themselves to get in. Yes. So there's more comfort to the animal uh, when, when you do it like this. Wow. Yeah. So your, your, your choice uh, of uh, housing mm -hmm. material, mm -hmm. you've done, you know, you, your, <laughs> your coop is better than some of our schools, <laughs> public schools. Eh? Yeah. So how did you come to, into, uh, to this? Okay, one of the things is uh, I'm an urban farmer. Yes. As you saw, I'm literally between Old Kalawa and uh, Nyahururu. Yeah. They, we, it's also like a high crime area. Okay. So we mainly did this because of security. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that, that concerned us. Like, um, we needed to make sure. And then we wanted to make sure we did something that was permanent. Uh, and then also we rain harvest. Mm -hmm. So we decided to use the corrugated iron sheets. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. When there's a tank connected to that. Oh, yes. Yeah, but that's that's one of the reasons we decided uh, to do that. Um, and before we leave this KB call, eh, yes. there's something I wanted I'd like to highlight to you. We, mm -hmm. Okay, for the minerals, mm -hmm. uh, th th this product was is from Coopers, Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually introduced it in December. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Ma Mali, I think Mali Kamili or something like that. Yes. Uh, before, there are two, two kinds of minerals leaks that we like, minerals that we prefer to use. Yes. You can either use Vital Condor mm -hmm. or you can use this product from Coopers. Mm -hmm. The reason why we switched to Coopers is because Coopers added cobalt. Mm. Cobalt is essential in ruminants for their synthesis of B vitamins. Yes. Yeah, so that's why we decided to go that. The other one we use is a, the regular salt leak. Mm -hmm. uh, this is VetPro. Yes. And when you're feeding sheep, mm -hmm. when you're buying these uh, the, sal the salt leaks, yes. the thing you want to make sure it doesn't have is copper. Yes. That's why you're told you cannot give the salt leak given to cattle mm -hmm. to sheep because sheep do not process copper. It will be quite toxic to ah. them. So whatever, we prefer vet, vet pro because it, it, you know, it meets those needs. Mm -hmm. It also has one of the most important vitamins, selenium, Yes. Yeah, to, to the animals. So that's pretty much what we do. Our wind rams. Yes. So we have a mixture here. We have a mixture of pure breeds. Mm -hmm. We're the red tags. Yes. Now we have what we call percentage uh, uh, animals. Yes. So the one we were discussing mm -hmm. was this guy. This guy was born October 24th. He's a percentage mamake in Wakajiado mm -hmm. and was bred to one of our T4s. Yeah? Yes. This guy was born at 4.68 kg mm -hmm. on October 24th. November 30th, mm -hmm. alikuwa 15 kilos. Yes. Now, December 30th, mm -hmm. alikuwa 21. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was kind of giving you the idea that a good ram mm -hmm. does well for you. Right now, this guy, I bet you could be between 30 and 35 kgs. Yes. Now, nelekea what, four months? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's about four months. Four months, yeah. yeah. So, if you look at the difference between a pure breed, mm -hmm. who you, mm -hmm. now you percentage, mm -hmm. Angalia nyuma, the hindquarters, yes. I love the size of the back. We are kona nyama kuliko uyu. Though they are ah. the same rika. Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. 
So here they are feeding on uh, also silage. Silage. They are already introduced to silage. We have already been introduced them to silage. Yes. Uh, when a particular sunflower, then we also add like lucerne. Yes. Uh, the alfalfa pellets for them. Yes. yes. Uh, they are dewormed every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Multivitamin injections every week. Ah, uh, nice. Alternate between dower boost, mm -hmm. bermuda, yeah. and butaforce. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so we have five paddocks. Yes. The first one being this one. Yes. Uh, these are ewes that just uh, we stopped nursing. They're no longer lactating. Yes. And also ewes that their body condition wasn't correct for yes. us to breed them. Okay. We have 28 animals upper. Mm -hmm. So these are guys we're going to be breeding around May. Yes. Now this cubicle, mm -hmm. we have the wind rams, yes. both pure and uh, percentage rams. Mm -hmm. uh, we no longer have any use, all the use have been sold. Yes. Uh, then the, this is paddock two. Mm -hmm. Now paddock three, mm -hmm. uh, the he, mm -hmm. uh, ikona, it, we have 38 animals apple, mm -hmm. one ram. Mm -hmm. That's one of the breeding groups. Yes. Now the next to that is paddock four. Yes. Paddock four has a, because uh, paddock three has a mixture of pure breed and uh, percentage use. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are, uh, actually most of them are bred, we'll be taking this ram out of here this month. Mm -hmm. Now, paddock 4 mm -hmm. has also a mixture of pure South African ewes and one pure South African ram. Mm -hmm. The last paddock has only pure South African animals. Yes. Ilya Musho. So we have in total five paddocks. Yes. Uh, yes. The total area, the total length of the whole complex is 157 feet. 157 feet. Yeah, by 40. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so here we have the sunflower. Yes. Uh, and a shout out to Kenyan farmers. We need to grow our own. It's true, becoming true, expensive. True. Yes. So we have sunflower here. Mm -hmm. The green sacks you see there mm -hmm. are alfalfa pellets. Mm -hmm. uh, this are uh, what we feed our kids yes. from the time they are like a month old. Mm -hmm. This is actually Lusan. We call it Lusan in Kenya. Yes. But this is alfalfa. Yes. Now for our lactating ewes, mm -hmm. the ones that are nursing, we make our own dairy meal. Mm -hmm which is 70% maize jam mm -hmm. and 30% sunflower. Yes. So each animal, we make sure they get half a kg daily mm -hmm. of, for lactate in use. Yes. Now, for the kids that are beginning to eat, mm -hmm. at from th uh, 10 days to, to almost like 90 days, mm -hmm. we give them this, this we call this, this is a creep feed, mm -hmm. where, which is 70% uh, maize jam and 30% soya. Okay. Soya is a muscle builder. So for growing animals, mm -hmm. you... We, we go with uh, soya. So sunflower for everybody, mm -hmm. the green sacks, uh, Lusan, we get mm -hmm. it from a farm, farmer in uh, Naivasha, Colorida. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one, we get it in Akur, we have it mixed for ourselves. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you see, you, you, you are mechanized, eh? Yeah. And uh, you're a sheep farmer. I'm a sheep farmer. Yeah, yeah. it's important to note that. These are uh, yeah, you need things you see in, in, in dairy farms. In, <laughs> yeah, totally. The other thing, one of the most other important tool we have, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hidden, yes. is the weighing machine. Oh, it's the scale, yeah? Yeah, the scale. Yeah, the scale. yeah, we are a data-driven farm. We uh, wear animals, especially the growing ones, because yes. we want to see how they are performing. You, are you using solar? Yeah, we use a, we are a solar farm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, very, yeah for yeah. the secu security. Yeah the lights, mm -hmm. and also the borehole. Now, all these animals, apart from one of the girls at the back there, mm -hmm. were direct imports from South Africa. Majority of these animals are T3s to T5s. Okay. The ram is a T4. We got it from Mickey Phillips. Yes. The ewes. Oh, the, the ram there, right? Yeah, yeah. the ram, yeah. Yes. Now, the ewes, we got them from Albihorn and also Mickey Phillips, which are the uh, two of the top breeders Yes. In South Africa. Yes. And the reason we did this, the reason we, I decided to bring these animals mm -hmm. was to, to shorten the distance yes. between South Africa and Kenya. True. Now, instead of farm, a farmer hustling to go to South Africa and collect the animal, mm -hmm. we have the pure breeds here. Yes. And so it was important for me first to start with good genetics. Mm -hmm. uh, Albihorn is considered one of the best doper sheep farmers in Kenya. Yes. So is Mickey Phillips. Mm -hmm. And this, these are his talk. Mm -hmm. These animals landed in November. Mm -hmm. uh, we are breeding them with our T5 ram. Yes. Uh, this cubicle is 27 feet by 20. 27 so by 20. By 20. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have like, I believe we have 25 animals in here. Yes. Uh, so they were fed silage. They were fed silage 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they you just let them eat the whole day, uh, and that's that's it. Though. Yeah, but now these are pure 
So South African James uh, mm -hmm. in the recent past eh, mm -hmm. and I believe from for, from last year yeah uh, the number of farmers that are importing directly from South Africa mm -hmm. has has shot up yes we had an import in November I mm -hmm. believe in early December or something yeah. mm -hmm. and another one actually coming in a few weeks eh? yeah so why is that uh, most farmers are really beginning to realize mm -hmm. uh, genetics matter you see, we've had dopers around for, for, for years yeah. in Kenya, yeah? Yeah. This, uh, for, for over 50 years uh -huh. in Kenya, yeah. available. Mm -hmm. uh, how come we're not able to maintain uh, the quality of standards yeah. in South Africa? Yeah. I'm trying to get this because uh, I'm looking at a scenario maybe where 30 years down the line we are still importing from yeah. South Africa. Yeah. So I how, think, do, how do we tame that? I think one of the biggest things, problems, and I actually suffered from this the first time, the first dopers I bought, uh, from a farmer somewhere in another county, yes. there's a lot of inbreeding. Oh, yeah, okay. Inbreeding is a problem here. So yes. you end up finding, mm -hmm. yes, you started with good genetics, mm -hmm. but poor record keeping. Yes. So you end up finding, you're getting animals that are inbred. Yes. And you, the quality kind of affects what you have in Kenya at the moment. Yes. However, I would say I'm seeing a lot of good progress with a lot of Kenyan farmers. Yes. Uh, good management is essential. Uh, making sure that you're maintaining the purity of the breed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a lot of information out there right now on how to manage this animal because you can have a pure breed animal, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yes. But management is equally important. True. Yeah. So good record keeping, uh, good deworming, vaccinations, making sure that, because I think that's where South Africa is really on top of their game ahead of us. The science, the scientific part of this. Yes. They have really, really done well with that. So uh, how have you found the market? Uh, is, it, is it hospitable enough for mm -hmm. a beginner? Uh, I would say the market is there. For me, I'm a doper breeder. Yes. My target market is not the butcher. True. It's farmers who want to buy a ram mm -hmm. or an ewe to go improve their breed if they're dealing with, uh, uh, for, if they're doing it for meat production. Yes. So I've had a good success, especially with uh, the, uh, the rams, the ewes that you have been selling. Yes. Because uh, most people, were, it's a challenge. If you look at the numbers, if you're going to go to South Africa today and say you're going to bring a T5 ram, mm -hmm. you should at, at a minimum budget 280,000 shillings mm -hmm. to get at that animal to Jomo Kenyatta. If you're going to the top of the line, a T5 ram, yeah. 200 to 300,000. Uh, behind you, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a T4. Yeah, T4, yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to go for a T5, you at a minimum budget between 90 and 110,000 shillings. Yes. So w if you can be able to produce an animal that you can sell to a Kenyan farmer, pure breed T5 ram for 100,000 shillings to a farmer, they are coming out ahead because they're getting an animal that has already zoya the Ken Kenyan climate. Yes. And you're also being able to select for yourself. You don't yes. have to spend all the money to go to South Africa. Yes. Spend 200 grand for an animal. Yeah. So the, and that, w that has been our market. You have a lot of farmers coming in saying, I need a pure ram. Mm -hmm. We have them. Yes. A farmer wants a percentage ram. Yes. Uh, we have them. Oh, yeah, point. and uh, we also insist, you know, like before you buy an animal with us, we need to sit, we need to show you how we have managed them. Yes, because we need them to thrive for you. True. So we want to have a relationship with our with our with our customers, because it's vital that for the money you're investing, yes, that you get to see that what you're benefiting from. In terms of uh, the, the your team, the people yes. helping you, mm -hmm. I think you've actually had mentioned that you only have one guy yeah we only have we have yeah. 150 animals 150 and, and one, one worker so that that uh, that is efficiency right there mm -hmm. so the, the system is efficient yes. for you. yes however at the same time mm -hmm. because now you have to control everything uh, the animal does or yeah. consumes yeah uh, it kind of uh, takes the, mm -hmm. the the cost of production mm -hmm. a bit higher yes. compared to free ranging mm -hmm. what kind of uh, records are you keeping Okay. To make sure at the end of the day, mm -hmm. at the end of the month, at the end of the year, yes. the numbers are making sense. Okay. So I, I, I like that because I am hungry for data. I need yes. to know what I'm doing. So I have leased land for growing silage. Yes. Now, when the current cost per kilo of silage for me is two shillings a kg. To grow it, to lease the land, to have it chopped up to have it brought to my house so the high end the, yes. the big animals like this t4 this i think this animal is almost 150 kgs eh? yes, yes him give him three to four kgs a day yes so 
at most ana consume 10 shillings God per day damn, yeah. the smaller ones mm-hmm. and that's all, that was I was kind of saying I need, I need to address the myth yes that you need large tracts of land to do this yes so if at 2 shillings the dop, the Kenyan dopper mm-hmm. only consumes a kilo to 2 kilos a day yes. that's 6 shillings True. so in a year that animal is only consuming 2000 shillings per year Wow. Yeah. So add the vet cost at the minerals. Even if you say that animal is costing you 3000 to 4000 shillings in management, that is silage, the 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 minerals, the vitamins. And it gives you an animal that you're able to sell for 50 to 100,000 shillings. You're in the money. Wow. Yeah. I like zero grazing because first it controls the issues of parasites. Yes. You know, I it's like we are in cl- as you saw as you came in we are bio very bio uh, safe yes. precautions mm-hmm. so our animals we, we don't need to worry about a lot of uh, parasites from external parasites hitting them mm-hmm. and also like i feel when these animals are enclosed like here like now i'll come back in the afternoon and i'll sit with these 25 animals for like an hour and mm-hmm. uh, i'm able to observe who is eating who has an issue you know yes, yes. so i'm able to catch if there's a problem mm-hmm. i'm able to know you know there's a problem with this animal i can we need to address it wow. uh, but if you have large tracts of land uh, then you can use that but i think zero grazing for me is zero grazing as well. works for you so james uh, i would like also to understand eh? mm-hmm. uh you see you, you you don't have a farming background your yeah. you, your background is more on uh, finance finance yeah. and data yeah so uh, i want to understand eh? uh-huh. the planning stage of such a, a, a of such a project eh? yeah. because i believe uh, if you plan well that's yeah. how you, you you planned well obviously that's how you you got to where you are in such a short period of time and yeah okay so one of the things i did as i told you earlier before i imported these animals yeah yes i went to kajiado and got dopas from there yes i stayed with those animals for two years mm-hmm. so that i could learn from them mm-hmm. then after i learned what these animals require mm-hmm. then i multiplied what i needed mm-hmm. but The other thing is you're not going to know everything at once. True. Yeah, so you're going to make mistakes. Eh? Uh but the, the thing is like g- get your feet wet, mm-hmm. start doing it, mm-hmm. surround yourself with people who can give you the information that you need. Yes. Uh set a goal that you know we have I have what I call a vision board in my office mm-hmm. of where I want to be in a particular time with this business. Yes. So with those goals in mind, mm-hmm. I ask myself how do I get there? Mm-hmm. Uh then uh, you you work towards it. Yes. Then don't compromise on quality. When I said I was going to decide to import these animals, I knew I needed to go to the best in the country, in the world. Yes. And Albion and Mickey Phillips are considered among the top uh dopa sheep farmers in Kenya so I, in South Africa in South Africa yeah. yeah so I was like I'll start with the best land the management mm-hmm. then uh execution is big yes uh learn from your mistakes mm-hmm. uh one of the let me give an example we had an incident of blue tongue I didn't know about blue tongue disease mm-hmm. and we we lost an animal mm-hmm. then the first time we thought it was like an infection we had tried to give it antibiotics it wasn't working mm-hmm. then when the second animal died uh we took because uh, they died in the same day we took both carcasses to Nakuru yes. the Ministry of Livestock in Kenya mm-hmm. paid 250 shillings for an autopsy to be done mm-hmm. we were told we needed to give them blue vac- uh, blue tongue vaccine it's yes. called blue vax mm-hmm. since then we haven't still lost an animal from uh, blue uh, blue tongue mm-hmm. but what i'm trying to say is like you're going to make mistakes yes. but don't waste those mistakes uh-huh. learn from them yes. this is where we store our feed yes As you said we know we only do maize silage yeah? yes, yes yes now this is one of our silage bunkers silage bunkers yeah, yeah so this thing is uh 30 feet long mm-hmm. 11 feet wide yes and 4 feet deep okay. we have around 30 tons 30 tons 30 tons now the, the discussion we were having about hay Versus and silage, silage. Yes. yes this came from one acre uh-huh. that's 30 tons yes now the, the maximum an acre of hay will give you mm-hmm. at a tukasema 4 500 bales yes. at 10 kgs or 15 kgs a bale uh-huh. is 6000 kgs true so uh, we prefer to go maize silage eh? yes uh so we also as you can see we also use the uh the drums yes to store uh, our silage we also use the polythene bags so this this is a uh, this is quite interesting because yeah uh You have learned something also. Yeah. So you have the silage bags? We have the silage bags. Uh, you have the drums. Yeah, this around 250 kg yes. in a, like almost 3, 350 to 380. Yes. Those ones carry around 70 to 80 kilos yes. of silage. Yes. Yeah. So and also when we're doing our silage we molar plus and molasses. Yes. We always do we always do that 
21 mm -hmm. days but now the way this has been compacted kwanza kama ata this one in the hapa ata mm -hmm. ata inaenda 5 years mm -hmm. so how, how much uh, silage are you able to store in this in, in, in your current setup uh, so right now i think we have used whenever everything is when, when everything is filled up yes uh, i would say maybe 110 to 120 tons wow yeah yeah silage 110 yeah 120 yeah silage yeah so and you, you you'd mentioned earlier that uh, you spend about you use about 7 uh, tons yeah 7 tons a month yeah so yeah a uh, hundred kind of gives you yeah it covers the whole year a year and, yeah, and, plus. and, and a half yeah yeah so especially and that's all kind of saying if mm -hmm. you remember when you're planting maize for silage mm -hmm. it's different the spacing requirements it's different from maize for feed yes it's you you plant more seeds in a in a big uh, in the same like you plant like in one acre you plant almost twice the seeds when it's for food eh? yes and one of the things you want to go for you want to go for a plant a maize plant that gives you height yes that's what you want to go for if it gives mm -hmm. you height mm -hmm. double cob mm -hmm. that's that's perfect this is a pharmacy yes uh all this kind of reason it's important for a farmer yes the the, the most crucial time you when you need a vaccine mm -hmm. you, you need to have it close by yes. because of emergencies and stuff mm -hmm. we buy ours from river agrovet in akuru mm -hmm. uh so the the kuinjectiwa mm -hmm. and is easy yes then the dewormers uh cure flow kai for sheep mm -hmm. this is a product we prefer to use uh for our um for the woman yes alafu sasa tunasema tuna tunaifanya combination mm -hmm. ya cure fluke na ivermectin yes what to seem like that uh -huh. yeah sasa so, so, that one has really worked for us so, yeah. so if if a vet is coming mm -hmm. he's, he's only b b bringing his skills and 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 later skills zake because yes. even the like yesterday i had to go to nakuru mm -hmm. i needed five uh, ml syringes yes yeah so in pretty much right now yes uh, i'm able to treat the animals myself yes Yeah, because I have the uh, have Jacinta to contact, mm -hmm. and I know the common kitu kama diarrhea, mm -hmm. coughing, uh, you know what to use. Yes. So not unless it's something really okay, I'm surgical, I'm mechanically surgical or whatever. Yes, yes. I, everything else I'm able to do myself. Now, actually, we're starting uh, the next month. Yes. We're going to be having worker training, two two day worker training. Yes. This person comes and spends time with uh, with our worker, mm -hmm. with myself, and yes. also with our vet. Yeah. So by the time that person leaves here, they know what to do, how to take, use a thermometer for the animal, how mm -hmm. to treat diarrhea. Yeah. So like now we saw a kid that was diarrhea over there. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, the, my worker mm -hmm. will come and take one pill of this. This is, yes. this is Dowatrim. Yes. Crush it, mm -hmm. give it to the kid. Mm -hmm. Now, if that diarrhea doesn't stop, kesha tunaenda sulfur sasa in vaccine the injections. Yes. So we'll be starting that ne next month so that workers know how to take care of these animals yes. well in emergency distresses what you do mm -hmm. when you call the vet mm -hmm. yeah so that that's very important because you're going to do this remember you are buying a ram let's say buying a ram for 50 to 100,000 shillings yep. yeah mm -hmm. think about it as buying a safari com share it's an investment you're making for anybody wanting to do it uh, it's possible possible but yes. passion before profit uh, mm -hmm. for you to be successful all this kind of reason Uh, money is a byproduct of what you're putting in yes you know so you have to make sure that you're not cutting costs you know yes. start with good quality animals run them good uh, with good management and the outcome it will come fantastic yeah.